All right. Welcome, everyone, uh, to our new year, new members, gym owners, Blueprint for Success. Uh, we're really happy to have you. I know it's just at the top of the hour, so uh, Kelly and I will get started here in just a few minutes. Um, but I see some more people trickling. We'll give everybody a minute or two uh, before we get rocking and rolling. Um, we'll, do, we'll do some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Mike Wiest. I work here at Zen Planner, a uh, longtime 10-year gym owner. Um, and then Kelly, let me tell everybody about you. Yeah, my name is Kelly Sweeting, also at Zen Planner, uh, also a gym owner, 15 years and still a gym owner. So bringing that experience along with Mike into uh, into this webinar. Awesome. So um, while we're giving everybody a minute or two to just kind of trickle in, if, uh, if you're in the chat, go ahead and tell us uh, where you're from, what your gym name is, what, what is the location, and then the type of gym so we can uh, get to know everybody that's here. Yes. They are coming in. CrossFit, Maryland. Welcome, John. Uh, I, always, I always pronounce this wrong. I know it's going to fall. Shaolin. 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 I think Shaolin Kung Fu. I think so. Yeah, there we go. Out in Denver. Cool. Right where our, our home base is, Denver, Colorado. We got it. Tanya, strongman in boxing. I had a boxing gym for about 10 years. Oh, John, you're too, you're too kind. <laughs> what? New Zealand. I love that functional fitness CrossFit. There's Colby from Oxnard Movement. <clears throat> cool. Welcome, Colby. Colby, we'll bring you up on uh, on the stage here uh, when we uh, have the have the chat with you towards the end. So um, you'll get that. You'll see that invite uh, on the on the platform. Yes. Cool. Nicole. We see it. We're seeing a lot of the uh, CrossFitish gyms. I like that CrossFitish <laughs> functional fitness. Welcome, <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome Nicole from Got, Still Got It Fitness, Lomita, California. Personal training for studio for people over fifty. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite clients I've ever had. Uh, one of my favorite couples. They were both in their late seventies, mm -hmm. and they did our group classes, which is really cool. We obviously That's skipped the workout for them, but um, <clears throat> just a great, great population to work with. Yeah. So awesome. I actually, I love that about functional, functional movements. The, the, the age gaps tend to be really wide, but we still get to the same, same stimulus too. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome Chris from CMB fitness. Um, Christy from across the gym in New Jersey. Christy, what's the name of your gym? Drop it in the chat. Hey, Greg from CrossFit living the dream. Hey, Ajax. Oh, we've Greg, we've been, we've been chatting back and forth. Good to see you on the webinar. Um, Paul from Stark uh, Strength and Conditioning in, in Canada, Winnipeg, and uh, they're sharing from uh, Fortius. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Brazen Christy, Athletic. yeah. Brazen Athletics, CrossFit Willow. Awesome. All right. Well, um, I think we got some a good population good group here. So um, Kelly, if you want to go ahead and get started and then I'll jump in uh, for some of the demo. Sure. Welcome, you guys. Uh, we are into the last part of our year in our gyms. And so that is the goal of this session is to kind of go over uh, quarter four and moving into uh, the first part of the new year. So uh, let's go over today's agenda. Really simple. We're going to talk about three main things before we uh, actually speak to Colby from Oxnard Movement member engagement, member engagement at the end of the year, uh, and also as we move into the new year, client reactivation, which is actually one of my most favorite parts of our uh, workflow inside of our software uh, because it has huge value. And then um, planning for the new year, how you plan inside of your facility with your staff, um, how you plan inside of your software, and how you get your members ready as well. So let's get started on member engagement. I had a conversation the other day with Colby from Oxnard Movement, and as a uh, owner of a couple of different facilities, um, I did own a boxing gym, I've owned yoga studios and also CrossFit. Um, this is the time of year coming up that 
it, it feels like it's really easy for people to fall off and whether it be travel or the, just the holiday season, expenses, places to go, um, my numbers always would skyrocket as far as like, hey, can we freeze my membership for the month or um, hey, let's cancel and I'll, I'll, talk, I'll give you a call in January. So how do we shift that and really um, leverage the, the holiday time? I made a list here and of course there's probably a million more things, but first and foremost, I started with events and classes and scheduling. So holiday themed classes uh, and member appreciation events, they can be one in the same or separate um, as we go into Thanksgiving and then um, the, the holiday, holiday time, there's a lot of opportunity to have really fun community building events for your members uh, that, not only are going to keep them engaged and keep their fitness level high, but also um, they're hopefully they're bringing new friends. Maybe they're bringing family members and new people are coming in um, and they feel appreciated. So I do both in my facility. We have a I actually run a challenge from the day after Thanksgiving to the day before Christmas. Um, and it is fitness and nutrition. Um, and it's just to kind of keep people on track for that really strange period between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, it includes a 5k run. It includes a wad and wine, which seems counterproductive, but it sells out every single year. Um, and it includes our holiday party. Everything is free for our members. Um, and we have a lot of fun and it keeps people coming back. So uh, obviously ways to incorporate our software from Zen Planner um, through engagement is, uh, is, is key just so that we can keep that communication going with our members and let them know what's coming up and just keep them in the know. So Mike's going to be going over that as I get through these points. Um, flexible scheduling to accommodate holiday schedule. So this one can be tricky inside of facilities. I tend to adjust my schedule uh, around the holidays based on past experience. So every year I kind of make note of like, okay, the day before Thanksgiving, that night class is always pretty low attendance. People are prepping for Thanksgiving the next day. And so I take all of that data from my member management software and I utilize it in creating some flexible scheduling around the holidays. Um, and I would love your feedback guys in, in the chat on if you guys change your schedule, if you have you know, sometimes you'll see people doing some kids kids programs during winter break because they're out of school, um, a special holiday time class as we lead up to Thanksgiving and also Christmas. So there are ways to create some flexibility, maybe some extra open gym uh, offerings uh, can help people stay engaged if they can't make it to regular class times. Um, holiday promotions. There are a couple trains of thought when it comes to uh, promoting your business and lowering prices. So there's definitely the train of thought, of, you know, of not discounting prices, but there are certainly ways that you can run holiday promotions. One of the things that I've done and I continue to do, uh, and I started doing this probably 12 or 13 years ago, is I created $50 gift cards for my veteran members because oftentimes they're forgotten about. And so that $50 could be used toward anything in the facility, but it was for them to give away to somebody that they know as a Christmas present. So I printed like a hundred $50 gift cards and I uh, gave them to my members who were just like the, the, the ones that were showing up all the time. They were my A members. Um, and I just said, hey, we appreciate you. Here's $50, give this in a stocking or give this to a friend who maybe would enjoy uh, what we do. And so it was a, an added benefit for them. And then it brought, it always brings in a ton of new people. Um, charity events this time of year can be really great and really easy to, to incorporate, whether it be a uh, canned food donation or Toys for Tots. And you can certainly find a local company to partner up with. Uh, that's typically what I do. Um, wellness challenges and social media engagement. The wellness challenge I touched on that, that month period between Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, those things we can keep members engaged through Zen Planner, through those emails, through SMS, text messages, just constant communication. Um, and then, of course, guys, using your social media, especially in this day and age, it is 
so important to even right now look forward in your software, look at that content calendar and uh, and really get it going for uh, your events and schedule those posts. So I'm taking a look over here on uh, what, what would you do, Mike? You'd adjust your hours uh, Thanksgiving through New Year's. Yeah, so Kelly, I can go ahead and jump in and uh, yeah. showcase a little bit of how to do some of this in the platform. Um, just to expand on your points, this time of year, as you mentioned, is um, if you've been in business for any number of years, you start to see there's there's just always weird things happen. You know, everybody gets busy with, with you know the holidays and keeping. So I love that you shared. You guys do a challenge from post Thanksgiving to Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, we did a charity event. We were we always sponsored uh, families and children for um, Christmas, and that really br brought the community together. And we had a big, uh, you know, we go to the charity, drop off all the stuff, and um, so much so that actually turned into a foundation. Um, that's how that's how important that was to our community. Um, so yeah, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'm just going to show you guys during out there, throughout this presentation just a couple of areas of our platform where you can leverage some of the learnings that Kelly and I are sharing. Um, so give me one second to share. And okay. <clears throat> Kelly, just give me a verbal because the, the screen, I can't see the the chat are we are you seeing my screen okay i am i see it okay great okay so um a couple areas in the platform where you can start to showcase um some of the things that keep members engaged one thing i always tell people to do or share with and what we did at my gym was that two times a year we did we did a review request i always like to do this in but in the November, December timeframe before the new year um, for a couple of reasons. One, it just gives an opportunity for your members that maybe haven't spent, you know, the five, few minutes, like just kind of sharing their story about your gym uh, and the experience and the brand and what you've really done to help them live a better life. Um, so it's kind of a great reminder at this time of year where people are like, are not sure if they're gonna be as, attending as much, they're really busy, the family obligations, work obligations, travel, et cetera. Is to get them to go publicly share um, just a review on either Google or Facebook. So in the platform, we have this thing called reputation management. And what's really great about this is you can actually send individual review requests to people in your platform. There's Kelly's right there. So I'm gonna send Kelly one. And I can send her a review via text or email. So once Kelly gets this review, this invite from the system, um, then she can jump in and share her story about the gym. And what a great opportunity for you is to not only remind your members of like, hey, here's how great, like here's what they really feel about your facility, get really good feedback, and also take that review and leverage it for attracting new clients, new members um, coming into the new year. And so this is just a really, really great opportunity um, to leverage one of the features of the platform. There's also some other ways you can do it, which I won't get into today just due to time, but you can set up automatic review requests at certain stages of somebody's journey. So if you want to check in with them in their first 100 days at the gym, or maybe when they hit their six month milestone, you can set this up to automatically happen. Um, and then one other thing I want to show you is under our marketing tab, you have um, emails where you can build email campaigns. So when you're talking about communicating new events or communicating um, you know new challenges or anything you have all these great campaign options where you can build um, these really beautiful templated emails to send to your members uh, you know during this time to help advertise or share what's what you guys are doing in your gym so um, but for the for sake of time I'm not going to go and build an email but we have this great uh, tool here so Kelly I'll pass it back over to you yeah, absolutely. And, and, and to, to that note, um, if the thought of that is like terrifying because you don't know what it should look like or what it should say, there's, there's a lot of templates 
uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, there are a lot of templates that are already built in. So um, we, we touch on that a lot in the content that we are providing to you guys through our, our YouTube and our high level like uh, videos that we're creating for you. There's, there's templates that are already made for you, but also there's um, ability to personalize them. And so as you get more comfortable inside of the engagement software, you'll be able to uh, customize for your members. Um, let's move to the next slide, client reactivation. And this is where we talk about um, understanding that client activity. And that's really important also that you can start to personalize these types of com communications that are sending, being sent out. Um, so let's talk first really quickly about, and there's a million reasons why people leave, but ultimately we all have members that have left our facility. The reasons why we would have to explore that data. And, and um, I'm not sure about you, Mike, I do have a, I have a form that I have people fill out when they cancel a membership or when they're looking to terminate. Um, and it's anonymous. And my hope is that they can give some feedback as to why. So I kind of listed a few things um, for, from my own experience. Number one is, number one was always lack of results. So let's go back to the reasons why um, we had a member leave, they don't see the results that they want. And then how, so how do we as owners in our facility, whatever kind of facility it is, uh, combat that? And we want to help them come up with goals, goal setting sessions and touch points as we end the year and begin our new year with new members. Um, setting up goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, timely, smart. Uh, that is the ac acronym that I always use, creating that plan and then always following up. I had a really great conversation with Colby about uh, veteran members. I, I think that they can get lost in the shuffle and they are the easiest people to lose in your facility because we're so, so focused all of the time on our new leads that come in the door. So while that those are important and we have hopefully a touch point system set up, uh, really important that we um, keep keep those touch points in place for our current members and people who have been in our facility for a long time. So what about the people that have left? Um, we want to understand their activity and then customize the communication based on those behaviors. So if it's that they had had a lack of, of uh, motivation, that they weren't getting results, that they didn't feel uh, a sense of community, whatever their reasons are, we customize that communication before we send out that campaign for client reactivation. If we have 500 members that haven't been in, in the facility in 10 years, let's say you're a veteran gym, gym owner of 10 years, you've lost 500 people and 10% come back because you've given them a, a, a great offer in that email. That's a big number. So I love this, uh, this the capability in our software for client reactivation. Um, it allows you to personalize the, the communications. It allows you to set up this workflow system. So it's kind of hands off for you. I, I guarantee that we've all been in the same boat where like, somebody hasn't been in the gym for three or four weeks and you just don't realize it because you have a lot going on being a being the business owner being the coach being the programmer being the marketer being the person that cleans the bathrooms there's a lot of hats that you're wearing so having software that helps you manage that can be hugely important um setting up the campaign so they drip over time so that there's follow-up uh and then also incorporating two-way text communication um can help keep that communication going to keep people uh, coming back or get people to come back. And I think that Mike is going to uh, show you some of these capabilities. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. So um, one thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drop a little resource. It's called our reactivation framework. Um, so you're going to see a pop up here over in the chat area to get a copy of that. And so the, the, the reactivation framework is a great way to reactivate old leads, great way to act, reactivate old clients, and a great way to um, use the same type of framework for uh, put a challenge out to the group. Go look at your list of former clients from the past year. 
And I want you to send them a nine word email. Now you can do this in, in studio. We can do it in engage, uh, the engagement features. Um, but ask them to send a simple email, the subject line say, Hey, first name. And then in the, in the body, just say, what are your plans for to, you know, getting fit in 2024? And just take a, take a look and you can customize that, but don't keep it short and sweet. Just like I said, send it out. And I promise you, you will get a very healthy response rate. If you have a hundred people. I bet you're going to get 25, 30 replies, maybe more. Um, and when I did this, the first time I ever did this was back in like 2015. I sent it to about 400 former clients and I had 75, 80 uh, replies. And a number of those people, those former clients, and I, I think we converted 12 was the number of those former clients back into members. We got them back to the gym. So very simple strategy, drives revenue, especially at a time of the year where not a lot of people are joining gyms. We know that. You know, if you've been in the business for any time, you know December a, can be a tough month. Um, so do that. I recommend doing that either this week or doing it post Thanksgiving. Don't do it next week. Yeah. Uh, do it sometime Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of after, you know, after. So, um, one of the things I'm not going to share on this one, but I'll share on the next, um, on after Kelly talks about the next section, I'll share my screen again, but, um, you can build and we have this in a, in a workflow. So basically whenever somebody goes to a, an old lead, like an active lead, we call them or a former client. We have a whole workflow that runs through a couple of playbooks and touch points with email communications, text communications, to have a engine for you to consistently reach out to these people so that you never lose them and you don't just randomly send them an email once a year, right? And that's really, really important to keep people engaged. I'll share a quick story because I know we're getting tight on time. Um, one of the first gyms that we ever worked with uh, got somebody to join their gym at $1,800 a month for a personal training package because of their inactive lead campaign, which had all of these reactivation, this whole reactivation framework. And it was just one email about nine months after that lead had opted in and it got that person to schedule an appointment. They came in, talked about the goals and got that person set up on a personal training membership. So it works. Um, it's best if you have it as an engine where it's automatically just doing it behind the scenes. And then you can have a couple of times throughout the year where you, you purposely go out and do these reactivation campaigns um, in mass. So you can really build up the times of the year where, you know, typically we're not getting as many leads you know, like right now. So um, Kelly, you ready for the next slide? I am ready. That is going to take us into planning for the new year. And Mike and I have talked a lot about this and I've talked with other gym owners at length, including Colby about how we get ready for the first of the year. And typically in a small, medium style boutique fitness, martial arts, yoga um, facility, like we all have, um, it's a little bit different than like a big Globo gym. We don't get the hundreds and hundreds of people coming in for ten dollars a month at the first of the year and and that's not what we want either you know i i talked to colby about that that's not what he wants in his facility it's certainly not i can't handle it in my facility um it, it's not the goal i think that the goal for planning for the new year is to understand uh what you did well in the past year uh reflecting on that so having that year in reflection setting some goals for your business and then also setting goals with your members. So that goes back to our veteran members. Give a list to your coaches, uh, your staff of, of all of your veteran members and have them reach out, have them set up 30 minute goal setting sessions, talk about all of the wins and losses from, from the year. And, and I, for me in my facility, it's a, it's free for our, for our member. Um, and I pay my coaches. So it's a, it's a nominal, it's a nominal uh, fee on my part, paying my coaches for that 30 minutes of their time. And it really keeps people engaged, um, making sure that your staff is ready for the new year. So what does that look like? And it, it's not necessarily about 
getting ready for an influx of tons of new members. It's more about everybody being on the same page as far as just your standard operating procedures. So if you don't already have that, you should. Um, it's, it's something that is simple to create. What do you want your facility to look and run like? from the moment a coach walks through the door or an instructor walks through the door until um, the moment that they're done. If you are not there as the business owner or you're doing business owner things. Um, it, it took a lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes on my part and kind of a, a turnover of coaches at the beginning of my career owning a business to figure out that I needed to be really specific about what I wanted when it came to lights on, lights off, music, air, what, how I wanted things presented. I also think it's incredibly important for you guys to make sure that your staff is trained up on how to utilize your member management software. And that has been a request that Mike and I have gotten on um, on some video content for you guys, which we're creating. Um, everybody's different as far as you know what we allow our staff access to inside of our member management software and also marketing software. Um, but at, at the least, your, your coaches and your staff should know how to check in somebody new and check them out. Um, it, it, it's like the biggest issue for me it, as a gym owner, if somebody comes in and takes class and they're red inside and like they haven't paid because th they've, le they've left, I don't have their information. Um, and so going through that with your coaches, it's a really simple process and we'll be providing some of that, um, kind of training, training video for you guys, um, member happiness and retention and, and then also referrals and reviews. And so this, I'm gonna skip to referrals and reviews. I talked to Q, talked about Q1 goal setting and Mike has talked about uh, getting those reviews. I think referrals and reviews can, can kind of be bulked together in the importance. Um, just like we wanna ask our members for those reviews, we also wanna ask our members for those referrals. It's, it was the hardest thing for me to learn, um, but the easiest time to do it is in those goal setting sessions. You love what we do hey, do you, is there anybody who would love also what we do? And so setting up a really robust referral program inside of the software, using email campaigns, using a reward system um, can be uh, really beneficial as we start the new year. And then you just keep that train moving uh, as you head into the, the second part of the year. And then as we move into the last part of the year, Mike. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I think reviews referrals and a lot of things are like cultural things right where you, if you consistently talk about it you consistently highlight you know people doing it so for example somebody gives you a five-star review bring that and put it up on a tv at the gym print it out put it in the bathrooms um if you constantly have that stuff positioned or you you recognize people like let's say in your on your social channels when they refer somebody Right. If, and then you train your staff to always be thinking about asking what the right opportunity. I can't tell you how many times I was working with a spouse of a future member, right, where, you know, you're doing some personal training or you're talking to them after class and they're like, oh, my husband, you know, he, he thinks what, what you guys do. He doesn't like the group setting. He does his own thing. I said, well, invite, come and bring him into my next class I coach. And I'll make sure he has a good experience. He's challenged and then he'll remember that this is just like it was when he was in, you know, sports, when he played on the basketball team or football team or, you know, did anything like that. And sure enough, you know, it just became a normal part of our culture. And we get five or so reviews every single month from our members. And it was free. You know, it just required us to build that culturally. Um, so what I want to talk about in terms of planning for the for next year, I think every year right around, for me, it was always like the week before New Year's. Because it was really slow week in the gym. Uh, I usually didn't coach any classes unless I need to fill in for somebody. So it gave me an opportunity to really sit down and say, what do I want this next year to look like? How did how did each month go in 2023 um, or the previous year? You know, where did I see spikes in my leads? Where did I not? Was I advertising during that time? Uh, where did I have churn? and started looking at and mapping that compared to previous years, right? So I just had a little spreadsheet. I put all the numbers in, number of leads, number of new members, number of cancellations. I was tracking that as we went each and every month anyways, but I just looked at it in a big picture and said, okay, it has been consistent in the last two years, this month and that month, my lead volume has dropped, right? Um, 
you know, there's always a seasonality, but things change. You know, I'm in a, I'm in a college town. So I know May was a big churn month for me because a lot of the students that we had were going home for the summer or graduating. Um, so we would start to plan out that year and say, okay, we're going to do certain events at these times of the year. And I had this really beautiful spreadsheet that had all of the things we wanted to do. And I tried not to do more than like three big things in any given month. And that was just for properly educating the staff the overhead and the time that I it took me to build a program or my head coach or my general manager. Um, and then looking at the audience, what I'm doing for leads, what I'm doing for members, what I'm doing for um, partnerships or client reactivations. So I want to show you a really cool feature inside of our platform. So give me one second to share. All right. So the beautiful thing about technology in 2023, moving in 24, is you can set a lot of this stuff up. If you plan ahead of time, you can build a lot of this stuff up where it's going to run automatically for you. As long as you're properly educating your staff and you are um, you know, ahead of it, you won't run into the, the crazy days being a gym owner, waking up at 4 30 in the morning, coaching a 5 a.m. class, cleaning sales appointments, answering emails, making phone calls, um, training your coaches, hiring coaches, all the crazy things that we do each and every day. If you spend the time to actually plan the next year, you're gonna you're gonna remove a lot of that stress and anxiety that naturally happens of owning your own business, right? So we have this really cool tool inside of uh, the engagement feature. It's called our social planner. So I remember early in when I, the first year I opened the gym, I said, I'm going to post twice a day, 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. because I knew those were the engagement time frames on Facebook. This was back in 2013. So every every time I left the gym in the morning at 9 a.m., I would I would do my first social post. 9 p.m., I would do my my next social post. That was exhausting doing that every day. I had the reminder on my phone, um, you know, some weeks I was super creative and I could write these really awesome posts. And then some weeks I just struggled. So we have this really cool tool called a social planner. So we're on um, Kelly's new gym that she's opening. We're on her account. So Kelly, I won't, I won't, I'll delete these posts after the, uh, after I show the quick demo. So this feature allows you to create posts on different social channels directly from the platform. And you can sync up just about any of the major social platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Reels, um, Google My Business. You can, you can create all of this directly inside the platform. So instead of logging in, having five different screens up and reposting things, you can do it directly in the platform. So let's just say Kelly was doing her challenge, you know, get excited about our new challenge coming up. Coming up after Thanksgiving, All right? And let's say that Kelly was having writer's block of, on, you know, really what she wants to do. Well, we have this really cool feature called AI. And so I can do things like improve my writing, make this longer, make it shorter, simplify it, fix my spelling grammar, or I can actually go and generate using AI. So let's say this is called, for just example, the Christmas challenge. And it's our challenge between Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, 5K potluck, wine and wad. Kelly, I know you said a couple other things, um, but just for the example, and we'll Got say it. we'll add a couple fit keywords, uh, bring your friends, you know, sign up now, whatever. And then we're going to say, let's make this, um, let's just make this kind of casual or let's say excited, right? I'm going to do three variants and I want to make this content pretty um, small in terms of like, so I click this generate button and here in just a second, you're going to see some really cool content. So let's call, I think I like this one. So get ready to jingle all the way with our Christmas challenge. Join us for a thrilling 5k potluck, build a fitness wine watts. Okay. That's pretty close. Close. I love it. We'll hit continue. And now I have a social post. I can go in here and grab a um, an image. 
I can add a follow-up comment, which you've probably seen before. Like, let's say, a, here's the link to register. And that'll post automatically. And then I can go over here and hit schedule. And let's say I want this thing to come out um, Sunday, right? right after Thanksgiving. Now I have a scheduled post. I can look at the planner. Oops, actually zoomed in. And now I can see, oh, I got this great post here on Sunday the 26th. Now, let's say I want to post that again, but maybe edit it a little bit. Same process, schedule it. Let's go to, let's say we want to post that again on Thursday. And now you can see here that we have those two. So imagine having every channel, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Google My Business, every channel that you would typically post social to, you can just copy and paste and you can go to any day and build it directly in here. And before you know it, this is an opportunity where you can, you can train a staff member to handle all of your social for you, um, pay them per post, pay them per hour, you know, have some kind of expectations. And this is a thing you could delegate off your plate. One of the really cool things I didn't show you, but I'll go back, is in the menu, you have the opportunity, if you're having somebody do this for you, to create an approval process. So when I went to publish that post, I'll show you here real quick. Let's select the social account. I can send post for approval. Okay. Oops. Kelly's going to be the approver on that one. All right. And so now that you can load up all these posts for this whole entire month, or you can do it for the whole entire quarter or whatever cadence you want. And then Kelly can then go in here and say, yeah, okay, this one's great. I'm ready to go and hit approve, right? So lots of really cool things. You can also do some bulk content uploads through a CSV file. Um, I used to do that at my gym, pretty cool. Pretty cool way to schedule a bunch of posts, um, but you can see it all in the planner. One of the many features and functionalities inside the engagement features um, in terms of planning and getting ahead of getting started in 2024. Yeah, and, and Paul, to answer your question, um, I was just going to answer, I was just answering the chat. Um, this specific post that we were just showing you is going to post to my uh, Lyft Instagram. That's what, that's the only social platform that I've hooked up thus far. My, uh, my second facility is not opening until January. But wherever you choose to post it to and whatever you've connected inside your software is where um, that will that will post. Um, and I think I think that's what your question is. And hopefully I answer that correctly for you. Um, guys, we're going to talk to Colby next. Just briefly, Colby is the owner of Oxnard Movement out in California. Um, Mike, do you want to does he need to request to come on or? No, I'll get him just a second. Okay. Um, and I, I just have to say, I, I reach out to Colby because we have these twice a week success sessions that Mike runs and Colby comes in um, always with some really great, valuable questions that, um, that help us make things better for you guys. And, and also I think we'll help you guys in terms of you utilizing your software and then your business best practices. And so he strikes me as kind of like the avatar of the, of the owner that we would love to see. Um, and so hi Colby. Hello. Hello. How are you doing good? Thanks for coming on. Um, so I'm not going to keep you guys too long because I know that we're uh, we're a little bit over, but that's okay. Um, thank you for joining. I know it's uh, probably lunchtime, your time uh, around there. Um, close. Yeah. So so I want to go back to a couple of the things that we talked about in our phone conversation, but also that we touched on at the beginning of this webinar. Um, the end of the year for you in your facility, um, what does that look like? What do you guys have planned this year? How are you guys keeping members engaged? Or have you found that there are a few things that work though the tried and true every year that you do? Yeah, I think you hit on it really well, actually, like creating some more opportunities for people to like engage through the end of the year um, is an awesome thing to have. Um, and a I think a lot of times, 
you know, you, you talk about like the, the wadded wine, you're like that sells out every single year. I think towards the holiday season, having some sort of like social events is actually potentially better for retention and engagement than trying to do some sort of like fitness crazy so, such a thing. Um, yeah. We we do like a Friendsgiving that's hosted by the gym every single year. And we do basically like a holiday gala that's also hosted at the end of the year. And the Friendsgiving is like, the gym provides some of the food and then everybody else gets to like do some potluck style things. Um, and, we, and we typically have a really, really awesome turnout. Um, and everyone's invited, like the nice thing about these social events is because I'm not worried about can somebody do it or not do it, like people get to bring friends and yeah. family to those sorts of things um, and, and see, hey, what does this community kind of look like? Yeah. Um, and then in December, the holiday gala is a little bit more of like a formal dress up and we do like fun photos that are like inside the gym when everyone's dressed up. Um, and again, because it's not, I'm not worried like can somebody snatch or can somebody do some sort of other movement? you know, friends and family get to experience that community sort of, of feel as well. Yeah. Um, so those are some like year end things that I try to bring in some more engagement with. Um, but I also, we also host um, um, uh, like a clinic or a seminar, but that's, that's not something that's particularly uh, only to the end of the year. Those are things that we, we do on a monthly basis anyways, but yeah. they help help keep engagement instead of saying, hey, because it's holiday season, we're going to stop those. We still do those do seminars that. and clinics through the end of the year as well. How are you yeah. getting all of that information out to your uh, customers? Are you, you obviously social media and your emails? Um, is there any anything that I'm missing there? Um, that, those are the two biggest. I think that is the hardest thing, right? Is like, yeah. how, can, how can you communicate to the most amount of people? Like some people are like, I don't have Facebook. So if you post in the Facebook group, I won't get it. And some right. people are like, I send all your emails to my spam folder. So I don't get your emails. Um, right, right. And so it's, it's how can I touch as many channels as I can without being like obnoxious about, I need to be on every single channel. Uh, sure. So I, I typically do two emails in a month. Um, and those emails are, are, are full of information that, that have pertinent information for the end of the like usually that month and the following month. Mm -hmm. So one in the beginning of the month, one in the middle of the month. Um, and then I follow up like snippets of that into our Facebook page. I follow snippets of that into our Instagram feed as well. Um, and then we also, because a lot of that stuff, like the email is the base of that. It comes with some sort of like poster or, you know, physical collateral. I can print flyers out sure. um, and have them in, in the gym as well. So coaches are always announcing, hey, these are events that are upcoming. These are gatherings that are upcoming um, for people that don't read their emails, for people that don't have Facebook, don't yeah. have Instagram. They're like, I don't know about these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always that the, the one off that they just don't they're not on social media. So. That's where that, that I that I made that mistake early on was just like funneling everything into Instagram, and there are definitely the people that just don't look at it. So, um, and for you, you said something interesting uh, that resonated with me in our phone conversation, and actually to Mike also. We, when looking at numbers at the beginning of the year, um, we're similar, and that the influx into our facility happens like maybe a, li a little later, like a month, a month and a half after. So um, do you prepare any differently for that? Uh, is there is there a process you go through with your staff to get them ready? Are you handling all of those new people that are coming in? How does that look for you guys? That's a great question. Um, yeah, towards the beginning of, of the year, it's not the January 1st. It's between like at least two weeks into January into yeah. like mid February that we're seeing a large influx of people that are like, you know what? I said, I was going to do this. It's now the 15th. I need to actually um, do, do it. Um, I, I handle a lot of the onboarding process for our space. So I will probably do a lot of the discovery calls and potentially even those consult intro consultations. Mm -hmm. um, but I have two other full-time staff um, and, and they have a lot of availability that they set um, for one-on-one -on -one sessions. And so once I've done a one-on-one -on -one or an intro consultation, I'm able to schedule my coaches, um, like a, lo a lot of availability, right? right? Like early in the morning from 5 AM to 10, 11 o'clock. And then afternoons from like three 30 until seven 30, eight 30 at night. Gotcha. Um, 
So typically I'm, I'm not having the, the issue of, Hey, I don't have enough uh, space for you. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it does, our onboarding process is, is shaped a little bit to get people into a group class on a little bit slower pace so that people right. don't feel like they're, they're lost or confused when they get into the group yeah. setting. Do uh, you, do you have members coming into your group setting right away or do you onboard them? Everybody gets onboarded. The few exceptions to that um, is somebody who's coming directly from another CrossFit facility. Um, mm -hmm. I still do a consultation with them, but I'm, I may shadow a, a group class session with them and then have them go into a, a group class or into group classes immediately. Everybody else is doing some sort of onboarding where they're doing learning and they're doing like, not only like physical learning, but learning about our space too. Like right. how do I reserve classes? How do I record workouts? Where do I find these things? How do I set myself up for class? Yeah. Um, so just a lot of stuff that's like logistics that somebody may not think about when they're like, Oh, I'll just join a group class. And you're like, yeah. well, there's a lot of the other things. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is, this is going to be, this is a loaded question and probably difficult to answer. I didn't, I didn't uh, prep you for this one, but the last question <laughs> I have for you, um, you're a, you've been doing this a long time. And so I'm interested for the, the people that watch this and are brand new, the, the one takeaway that you can give, like what is the most important thing you can give them as you're starting out as a new, as new inside of this industry? Um, I, I feel like the, the one thing that, that helps lead to a lot of other things is, is something that, uh, like Greg talks about a, a, a lot. Greg Glassman was the owner, the founder of, um, mm -hmm. CrossFit was like, you just got to care about people. Um, if, if you don't care about people, it's really hard. Like you talk about like retention and veteran members yeah. and like reactivation, like people want to come to your space, um, and people want to stay there, but if they don't feel like they're seen, heard and understood, then I'll stick around. Um, yeah. and then you're constantly fighting a revolving door. So, so make sure, and even if that means like set up, pro like spend the time to set up systems and processes to yeah. make sure that people are, are taken care of. Um, cause if yeah. people aren't taken care of, they don't stick around. Yeah. And that's, that's like the biggest pitfall that you can do is be running in a revolving door. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's interesting in how you say that too, because I think in the beginning we're all trying to like save money and keep our overhead low and do all the things that you want to do so that your doors stay open. Right. And I remember in the beginning, just feeling like I was in this, like, the hamster wheel. And when you are in that hamster wheel, it's really hard to pay attention to what matters. And those are your members. And so taking that leap of faith and getting that software, that's going to do some stuff for you, taking that leap of faith and, and hiring another coach or getting a cleaning company once a week, like wherever that, wherever that you can find that source to take that off of you or to train somebody up so they can help you. Um, for me, it was, it was automated marketing, like a, th a thousand times over. I feel like, cause I started, I started my business when there was no Instagram, there was none, none of this stuff existed. So it was like pencil and paper and, uh, it's wild what we can do now. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I love, I love, I love that to your point to just make sure that you it's, it's member forward. So, um, I, yeah, I would say that the one big thing that I had was like my client success manager for you is automated marketing for me, like having a, a dedicated client success manager that had really good tools, mm -hmm. um, made a big difference for, for having it stay client forward. Even if yeah. I was like, yeah, busy with a thousand other things. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, Colby. Yeah. So. I know we have a, we still have a pretty good amount of people hanging on. Um, we're going to spend some time doing some Q and a, um, we'll just kind of open up the floor. Um, if you need to jump, go, go ahead. If, uh, we'll send out the recording uh, after the webinar. Um, mm -hmm. and I do want to add, to which, you know, focusing on that member experience is so key. I learned this my, after my first year in business, cause we, we opened up at a great time. You know, the market was, we were a CrossFit gym, so the market was booming in 2013. It was all over the news, all over national news. And 
I had so many people. I ended up selling my first year like 250 memberships. And at the end of the year one, I had 110 members. And we loved our people. We did every, we went above and beyond, I thought. Had great classes, really fun, great energy. Um, did it safely, did it, you know, everything they're looking for. But I didn't realize I had a churn issue because I had such a good lead, like lead body. Mm -hmm. And we I learned it was the six week mark. Yeah. The six week mark was what was the time that either people were all in or they're all out. And yeah. that turned into building a hundred day customer journey or client journey where we really we really just focus on what we want to have happen those first 100 days so they start to get the results um they're engaged in the community um you know they part of the culture and i always knew if i had somebody is when they bought their first t-shirt or they came in wearing a pair of you know night, yeah. uh, at the time it was reebok nanos um, <laughs> that's when I, I started to know but i think that combination of caring a lot, but exactly what you said, building the systems and processes to design your perfect client experience. Um, and then leveraging, you know, tools and systems to actually keep you organized. Because if you do have a great lead, like great lead volume, like I did at the time, uh, that will mask it, the actual true problem, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't always need more leads, but you, you definitely, if you can keep retain more people, Yes. It's a lot easier to retain people typically than it is to acquire new. It's a lot less yeah. expensive. So, yeah. I just wanted to throw that anecdote out um, from an experience I had or, or learned about running my business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Having having um, systems in place, like you can say, oh, I care so much about everybody. But as, as soon as you're, you're past like that 50 member mark, you could care so much in the world, but if you don't have systems to keep you in track, it's you're you're right. going to feel like you're falling behind or drowning or, or not doing the best that you could be doing. Well, and one of the things too that I didn't I didn't point out, but it was on my uh, list of reasons why people leave is confusion. Like if it's not easy for them to figure out uh, your, how to sign up for a class or how to buy a drop in or how to even you know navigate the website. The, that experience too can be a reason why people just get frustrated. So making sure that those systems are in place as well so that it's easy for our members um, to navigate uh, is is also really important. So um, just clarity, clarity overall yep. uh, for staff and for, for members. Yeah, I had something I wanted to share earlier and I, it just came back to me. Um, I meant to mention it earlier, but I know I was running a little bit long on the show, showing off the social planner. Um, a lot of gyms that I've talked to over the last decade um, always think leads, 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 right? And we just talked a little bit about member experiences, designing that. Um, but there is a great way to have, you know, these different channels or way people's come into your gym, right? Strong review, strong referral program. One of the greatest ways to grow because you're just growing like that influence. You have your organic channels, like the content that you share on social media or your website. You have partnerships that you might partner for the businesses in town to just get some awareness. Um, or, you know, like a nutrition company or one of those meal delivery services. Um, and I see a lot of times people, they go and they'll throw money at advertising. And sometimes they'll work with a company, sometimes they'll trial it on their own. But one of the tips I wanna share regarding the advertising is I would always advertise in December. Even though that was typically my lowest revenue month and lowest new member month, I would always advertise because I knew that our customers and they were gonna start getting bombarded by like the big box gyms, the Globo gyms, the, you know, the Planet Fitnesses of the world. We're going to start advertising right around two or three weeks before new year's and so it, it started the whole market was shifting into hey and you see this on tv you see it on the news programs you know how to get fit in next year you know whatever i would start to do that so my face and my brand and my coaches and my members I just do a little facebook ad a couple mm -hmm. videos a couple different ads don't didn't spend a lot of money but i would watch every day as that content would get engaged with and we have tens of thousands of views in our local community on those videos and those posts. Um, and guess what happened? We did end up having big, like that second week, third week in January, all through March, 
because I put a little bit of money into Facebook in Fe or December, in January, in February. And um, I just know a lot of people are a little skittish about spending money at this time, um, but it can work. Like just imagine you're one of the options that are out there while, while the whole market is thinking about fitness, thinking about getting healthy. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Some, some thoughts there uh, for you all to ponder as you're planning for next year, close out this year. Yeah, and if you guys if you guys start to think as we end this webinar, if you start to think about things that are coming to mind that you have questions about or that you just want to chat about, that's 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 who I am for you. Um, you don't necessarily if you don't want to throw your questions into this chat, but it's uh, but. I'm all over social media with my own facilities and also with Zen Planner. So um, I I would love to continue these conversations with you because I think it's uh, really valuable for you as um, as business owners to when Mike talks about that churn, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of business models out there where they the churn churn is part of their what they do. And they, they just know that that six, eight month period is when people are going to leave and they need to get new people in. And so uh, we're really in the business of you retaining your your members and, and helping you to do that. Um, in saying that, we have a couple of uh, different channels for you to go ahead and check out that are kind of uh, getting revitalized, uh, our YouTube channel. Um, and I think that, let's go forward here. Um, yeah, our YouTube channel, um, and then also our brand new TikTok channel um, and Instagram page. So there's going to be a lot of fun content on all of those channels. Our webinars are going to be loaded up on YouTube. Um, hopefully, a actual interview with Colby is going to get loaded up there. I'm going to rope him into that right, right here on this webinar. So, um, and then of course on TikTok, uh, guys, I'm going to be sharing my experience with you as I. Um, open another gym. So I'll do it with you right, right along with you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're just running out of time. So Colby, first of all, thanks for joining us and sharing those insights. Uh, always good to yeah. have you on. Um, I also plug, uh, we have our Zen Planner success. Yes. I always struggle saying that, um, <laughs> but those are open to anybody. We, do those twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at one o'clock central, two o'clock Eastern. And those are designed to look at a deeper dive into the engagement features of our platform. Mm -hmm. um, but also we get on topics about, like we discussed in the webinar, things that we're doing. So we have a number of gym owners on there. It's free format. It's just a Zoom room. Uh, and we do a lot of, we do start off with a 10 to 15 minute training. And then we go into a lot of specifics, uh, whatever questions that people have. So it's such a great, uh, uh, it's really great. It's very fun. I, very fulfilling. Yeah. Um, and it's a great way to connect with other gym owners. You know, we're not, I know it, what it was like when I ran my gym, sometimes it felt like I was on the island. Um, yeah. so it's a really great way to connect with other gym owners. So, um, and learn from each other. Yes. So. All right. We good, Mike? I think we're good. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll be sitting down to recording uh, in the next 24 hours or so. Um, yes. We'll get it by tomorrow for sure. And um, look out for upcoming webinars. We're going to try to do at least one a month, I believe. Yes. Uh, sometimes more. So. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Bye.